Um, so today's content is the stress component and uh, the shear strain. So I think we talk about like the stress, normal stress, shear stress, normal stress, shear stress on the cross section, normal stress, shear stress on the uh, general inclined plane. And also, um, but we, we never mentioned like in the 3D space, how do we define this stress component? So um, this is one topic, one small topic actually in chapter one. Uh, but I thought it's like it probably too confusing if I put out too early in the semester. So um, I'm going to talk about today. So it's chapter 1.4, uh, stress and the general loading condition. And stress component. So we started our class with a simple situation like or one one D bar. You only have tensile compressive force, or you have transverse force applied on bar. Then on on a beam, then you have the shear stress and shear force. So uh, of course that is like simplified situation. In real life situation is. Rarely that you only have a structure that only experiences tensile compressive or only has transverse force, like exactly in the in the perpendicular direction or exactly in the actual direction. So a more general situation for the real life structure is more like uh, force can be applied in any direction. Let's say we have a three D space. Um, I put a coordinates. Uh, if this is x, y, then use the right hand rule. This is the z direction. And let's say we have a structure. I don't know what shape it is, just a general shape. Um, then uh, it had a force in all direction. It does not need to be, well, there's no actual or perpendicular, just say um, in any random direction, combination of force um, applied on this structure. F1, um, F2, F3, F4. Now we want to figure out at a random point inside a structure, let's say at point Q, to figure out the stress component. Uh, the stress at this point. So uh, to define this uh, stress component on, at this point, so of course we have a minimum way to do it because uh, it can be on either on any inclined plane passing through P Q point. So this, this plane can be infinite, uh, but uh, to simplify our analysis to come to define a, um, state of stress at a point, the simplest way we can consider that, let's say if we have coordinate um, X, Y, Z, and we cut through this point on a plane that is perpendicular to X direction, perpendicular to Y direction, perpendicular to Z direction. And if we can define all the components on, on these three plane, the state of stress on, at this point can be defined. And at any inclined plane can be a derivation uh, calculated based on the stress component on this three plane, right? It just uh, we learned that one before. If it's con if we already have the stress at a let's say for one D bar situation at cross section, how to define the stress on the inclined plane at angle theta? Now in three D situation, the same. If we define the stress component on the x plane, y plane, z plane, which means the plane perpendicular to x axis, y axis, and z axis, in uh, any other plane, inclined plane, you can rotate the plane uh, about the Q point. It can be written as a function of these three composed stress component on these three surfaces. So let's start from cutting 
uh, through the Q, Q point on the X plane. So X plane means it's a plane perpendicular to the X axis. So let's assume it, it, we cut in this way. So now let's say, um, yeah. It's fine. So let's say this is structure I cast through the x-plane. And on this x-plane, uh, we need to figure out the stress component uh, on this x-plane. So of course, we should we take a small area. Since stress is force of area, we take a small area on this plane. And let's say this is the x-plane. This is a small area on this X plane. And on this X plane, let's assume that it has the force in the direction that is perpendicular to this plane. So we define this one. Uh, we put this one as that Px is this is normal force uh, on the x plane. And I use subscript x indicating the plane. And at the same time, you have a shear force on this x plane. So uh, shear force can be any direction, but no matter if we want to have a general situation, we can resolve always reserve, resolve it into the uh, y direction and z direction, right? So for the shear force, let's say, we have on this small area, I have a shear force delta V um, and it's on the X plane, X I use subscript as indicated the plane and this is the Y direction. And uh, still on this small surface, I have the shear force delta V still on the X plane in the Z direction. So now you can see that these two component can represent any shear force, I mean, shear force in any direction on this plane, right? I just put that as a component in the y direction and z direction. So now we can say that, okay, on this specific x plane, I have all the force on this small area that A defined. So the area of this small uh, rectangular shape is delta A. So now we already learned in the previous class the definition of stress, let's say uh, normal stress is equal to the normal force over the cross-section area. So it should be on this small area, we have the normal force delta Px and small, the area is delta A. Now, if we want to know um, the stress at that point, what we can do is that mathematically we can uh, make the data gradually decrease area. And when the area is approaching zero, it becomes the stress at that Q point. So let's write this. When the area is approached to zero, then this equation represents the stress normal stress at point Q. We already took the sm small area around point Q, right? So this is normal stress on X plane. And for the shear stress, again, uh, based on what we learned in the previous class, tau XY is should be the force on the X plane in the Y direction divided by the area. And now, of course, we talk about that shear stress. Shear, shear stress is like the area is parallel to the force applied direction. So uh, 
you can check now one normal stress is perpendicular to the force direction and shear stress shear force shear stress calculation in the force parallel to the uh, area so now again same thing when the area that a is approaching zero now this becomes a stress value at point q and similarly Tau xd equal to delta v xd area. So shear force on the x plane in z direction divided by this small area. And when this area approaches zero, it becomes shear stress at that point, at point Q. So this is how we define the normal stress, shear stress um, on the X plane. Any questions so far? Okay, so similarly, uh, since I said to commonly define the stress, state of stress, um, in this 3D space, a 3D situation, we also need a plane that is uh, perpendicular to the Y axis, which is we define as Y plane. So basically we did cut through in this way, cut through the P point um, in this way. So let's say if we have for the stress component on the Y plane, Now, again, let's say at point Q, I take a small area around point Q. On this Y plane. And similarly, it has force, normal force, of course, in the Y direction now. Um, and for the shear force on this Y plane, I can, again, resolve into um, Z and X direction. So two components. I write as delta V, the shear force on this small area on the Y plane um, in the X direction. And similarly, Shear force delta V on this small area um, in the Y plane Z direction. So this small area is again delta A. So uh, the definition stress, normal stress, shear stress is very similar. So I'm gonna write very quickly. Uh, sigma Y, normal stress in the Y direction is you take the force delta P in the Y direction, normal force in Y direction, divide by the small area. And when this small area approach zero, now this is a definition of the normal stress on the Y plane. And similarly, we have the shear stress component on the Y plane in X direction equal to the shear force delta V on the Y plane in the X direction, divide by area. And also we take small area approach zero. And same thing, tau Y C is equal to shear force on the Y plane in Z direction divide by the small area, and we take the area, converge to zero. So now you can see that um, the subscript uh, 
probably can figure out the sub the sub uh what the meaning of subscript. So the first one well sigma x some test with use use sigma x x so it doesn't matter. So because well the first and the second component should uh should always be the same. So sometimes we just write it as sigma x sigma y, but later if you read the FEA textbook, sometimes they write it as sigma x x sigma y y. So it doesn't matter. Uh, and tau x y we normally put two. So the first one is always indicating the plane. So for example, um, the these two means the shear stress on x plane. These two indicating the shear stress on the y plane, and the second component always indicating the stress component direction. So of course the one I. I put it here the shear force, but it's, if you put it as stress component, this means the tau x y. So this means it's in the x plane in the y direction, right? So shear stress component in the y direction, shear stress component in the z direction, and the same thing for these two in the y plane, but in the x direction, in the y plane, but in the z direction. So uh, this is uh how we write the subscript of the stress components. This is very important because when you read it um, more advanced uh, storm mechanics test in the future, you will always see this stress component uh, in this way. So the first one, let's use different color. Um, okay. X always represent plane and Z represent the direction. So uh, to make you guys easier to understand, you see the X. And of course, so X plane means a plane that is perpendicular to X axis. Any question so far? So we're not done yet. We we still have a Z plane, right? Um, Z plane basically means that we cut through the Q point, and I don't know how to. So it's more like cutting through this plane. Um to save some time, I would just write the, on the Z plane, the three component directly. But I guess you guys know what I mean. You cut on the Z plane and it's, again, you have, still have a normal force, a shear force in uh, two directions and take the uh, area approach zero, get a stress component. So now you get three, stress component z plane, it becomes normal stress, sigma z, shear stress on the z plane in the x direction, shear stress component on the z plane in the y direction. And the corresponding equation is very similar. Any questions so far? Okay, so now if we have these nine components, so three on the X plane, three on Y plane, three on Z plane, we can say that, okay, the state of stress on this data, uh, yes, yes, yes. We always take a small area around point Q and that becomes, the area becomes data A. But in the end, like, it's the same for all three planes, but um, I mean the area magnitude, but in the end, since we take data A approach zero, so it doesn't matter. Um, so now if we have these nine components on all three planes, we can say that state of stress at this point under this general loading condition, it can be defined because on any other inclined plane, it can always be writing as a function of these nine components, right? We can talk about this topic later, like towards the end of the semester, like how to find a, um, 
the stress on a randomly inclined direction uh, based on the stress component we put here. So now to put the these nine components on one um, unit to help you better understand, I can put in this way. Let's say if we have a Q, So let's say in 3D space, uh, around point Q, the point we want to figure out the state of stress around the point Q, we take a small cube. Um, and now this small cube, uh, again, the X, Y coordinate is the same. So uh, on this small cube, we can say that we have component on this X plane. And this also explained the question in the chat. Um, the since it's a cube, the area, this the area on the x plane, area on the y plane, area on the z plane. So it's the same. Um, so on this x plane, we have sigma x. X plane, y direction. Shear stress, x plane. C direction. Let me still put the coordinates here so you guys will not get confused. Um, this X, this Y, this is Z. And on the Y plane, we have normal stress. We have shear stress on the Y plane in X direction and also Y plane, Z direction. And now this surface becomes the uh, Z plane. This is a shear stress on the Z plane in the Y direction. Shear stress on the Z plane in X direction and perpendicular to Z plane to Z. we have normal stress sigma C. So this help you visualize this stress component on a um cube on a 3D space. Um and at a random point, if we can figure out these nine components, we can say that state of stress at its point is defined. So um Normally, when you read uh, the Thorne and textbook, they would put it in a matrix. Put the nine component in the matrix. So normally the diagonal term, they are sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. And first row is, the, is corresponding to all the components on the x plane, stress components on the x plane. So sigma x, tau, X, Y, tau, X, Z. Second row, all the stress component on the Y plane. Y, X, Y, Z. Third row, Z plane. Z, X, tau, Z, Y. So this, we consider the stress, data stress, we write in matrix, it has nine components and um, any questions so far? So now this way doesn't mean that it's like the nine components are independent because uh, we know that um, in our solid mechanics, the whole structure is in equilibrium, which means that if we take a small cube around any random point, this small cube 
or any section of the structure should also be in equilibrium. So if the this structure is in equilibrium, there should be some um, stress component that this should be the same in terms of the magnitude. So let, let's figure out. If we take the xy plane, for example, And to make this xy plane in equilibrium, we can see that there are actually several components that can generate a moment to rotate this xy plane. So this has tau y x, tau xy. And similarly, of course, at the bottom surface, I didn't put uh, on the 3D cube, but you should expect that. Um, same thing, tau y x, tau x y. And now these are the four stress components that can rotate the x y plane. And since it's in equilibrium, we can actually write a moment equilibrium equation. Um, about, let's say, about the z-axis, about z -axis, the rotation about z-axis equal to zero. Um, then let's say the area is, the edge length is A. Um, and area is delta A. So the moment equilibrium we can write as, well, these two, tau x, y will generate a counterclockwise rotation, right? And the stress times area becomes a shear force. Shear force times the distance between these two force become, it, it's a couple, it's a moment generated by these two force, right? And at the same time, tau y, x, tau y, x here, it will generate a clockwise rotation moment to counterbalance the moment generated by these two. So similarly, this moment calculation, tau, tau times area becomes shear force, and the distance between them is A. And the moment generated by these two becomes the force times the distance. So we can write this one as tau xy, delta A, which is the force, and then times a moment arm should be equal to tau y x times the area times moment arm. So now we get a conclusion tau x y should be always equal to tau y x. Right. So this is the conclusion we get based on using the XY plane. And similarly, we can expect that if we use the XZ plane or YZ plane, we can have very similar results. So I will write directly. Uh, similarly, we can have tau XZ equal to tau ZX always and tau yz always equal to tau dy. So now the nine components in the matrix, in the three by three matrix, as I said, they're not nine independent stress components. Uh, as long as your structure is in equilibrium, uh, you can see that this one should always be equal to this one. And this one always equal to this one, and this one always equal to this one. And instead, um, uh, in terms of the matrix itself, you can say that this matrix is actually symmetric matrix. Make sense? And we can say that we only have six independent components. Six independent components. So now we can say, okay, in 3D space, to completely define the state of stress at that point, at any specific point we only need six components, not nine.
six, only six. So, only six stress components. to define the state of stress at a point. So this six, uh, I can write as um, sigma x. Sigma y, sigma z, tau x y, tau x z, tau y z. Of course, you can always replace this one as tau y x, replace this one as tau z x, and replace this one as tau z y, right? But the key thing is that we only have six independent components. Any questions so far? So this is the concept of the like stress components. The key thing is that you need to understand, well, for normal stress subscript, it's very easy to understand. Normal stress sigma x means the normal stress on the x plane, uh, y plane and z plane. And the, the thing is that, okay, this one indicates on the x plane in the y direction, x plane in z direction and y plane z direction. Any questions so far? Okay, if no question, let's check um, your understanding about what I just said. So again, uh, if the coordinate is not indicated for any problem in the future, um, we can always assume this x plane, uh, x axis, y axis, and z axis. So, um, This is an example problem we did, I guess, in the first class. Is the lecture going to be on quiz today? No. Uh, today's class content will not be on quiz tonight, but you still need to stay in class <laughs> if you want to get a bonus for the attendance. Um, so let's say if we have these coordinates and this is the question we had in the first or second week of, of our lecture. And we know that there's a tensile force in between and it generates shear stress uh, in these two fastener. And my question now is that for the shear stress on these two fastener, how can I write the stress component? I mean, the first subscript, second subscript, tau. Give me the two subscripts of this shear stress. Anyone? Are we assuming that the first image is top down? We we only right now let's let's ignore um let's ignore this one. We only focus on the first one. X and Y. X, Y. Any other opinion? This is our coordinates. This is the graph. And there are tensile force in this bar. And I want you to write the stress component of these two fastener. X, Y, X, Z. Why you have two? If you know the tensile, tensile force is here, it, it, it's, it's in this direction. T, Y, X. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Y is tau Y, X. 
because if you have tensile force here and you have fastener here and the shear force, shear stress on this fastener should be on this plane. This plane is a plane perpendicular to the y that y axis. So this y plane and the shear stress and the shear force direction is in this direction and this direction is x direction. So the first subscript, subscript is indicating the plane. The second subscript is a direction of the shear force or stress component. So it's x. So that's why it should be tau y x, not x y, not x d. Any confusion here? Or you guys all understand? I don't know. If you don't give me feedback, I, I have no idea. Can you explain why the shear is in the perpendicular to y direction? One more time. I, I get that the tension is an X, but I don't understand the Y part. Uh, great. So let's say there's a tensile force in this bar, right? But the shear force, we are considering shear force generated in the fastener. The fastener is in this direction. And the shear force should be on this plane. Do you agree with me? We are talking about the fastener. Okay. Yeah. So now if the shear force is on this plane, this plane is the plane perpendicular to the y direction, y axis. So this we consider is the y plane. And now the force, shear force or shear stress direction is in this x direction. So the second substitute should be x. That's why we have tau y x. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so again, let's ignore this one. If we have structure oriented in this way, and again, we still have this coordinate system. Coordinate system doesn't change. And same thing, it has tensile force in the steel bar and have fastener in into the plane direction. So if I ask you to write the stress component, shear stress component of the fastener, what should be the subscript? Tau ZX. Thank you. Thank you. So now again, uh, since the shear force or shear stress is on this plane, um, so this is a plane that is perpendicular to Z axis, and same thing, the shear force stress uh, direction is still in the x direction. So first subscript, z plane, second subscript, x direction. Make sense? Now, how about this one? This is also a previous example. Um, On the, let's say on the, well, A, A, B, B should be the same. We know that there are shear stress, shear force generated on the A plane and B, B plane. And on these two plane, what are the stress component? Well, it should be the same. What is stress component, shear stress component? Anyone? GX, YX. Yeah, it should be YX. So it should be on this plane. Shear stress and shear force should be on this plane. And this is the y plane, again, in the x direction, right? So it's tau y x. And last one, let's, let's move the coordinates. Uh, this is also previous example problem. Uh, we know that in this at point A in this fastener, the pin joint to the fastener also has some um has shear force. So what is direction of the shear stress? So what is the stress component? How to write the stress component of the shear shear stress at point A, the fastener at point A. Would it also be YX? Y, X, Y is Y, X. Y, 
it would be ZX. ZX, why is ZX? From this perspective, the fastener itself is in like the X, Y plane. So perpendicular, that is the Z direction. Yeah, why Why the second subroot is X? The tensile force is to the right. Why, why so, there's tensile force in, to the right? It looks like it is, I don't know. <laughs> so let's check. You have the force applied in the Y direction, right? You have a supporting here, also perpendicular. So what should be the direction here? It would be ZY. Yeah. yeah, yes, yes, thank you. So, so it should be on the Z plane, this is for sure. And the direction should be the Y direction. There's really no X component in the whole structure. So, um. So it looks very simple idea, but you can see that I just asked three examples. You guys are um, a bit confused. So uh, just I'm using this example to help you understand what it really means. Um, the first subscript, sec second subscript. So when you do the like read the textbook in the more advanced uh, solar mechanics class, you understand what, what stress command they are talking about. Any questions so far? For the second example, why is not XY? I was asking the shear stress component on the AA plane and BB plane. The plane direction, the plane is perpendicular to Y axis, so it's Y plane. If you are saying it's X, then it means it's a plane in this direction. Make sense? First subscript is always the plane. The second subscript is always the direction. Okay, great. So um, I guess you guys all understand like the stress component, how to write, how to define a state stress at point and how many independent components uh, to define, to come and define a state stress um, at a random point. So I think this is like a very important foundation for our solar mechanics class. So the next one is the shear strain, shear strain. This is in textbook 2.7. So we talk about like a tensile compressive, it will generate tensile force compressive force to generate elongation, either positive or negative um, elongation in the structure. That is the considered the strain and the tensile compressive. Uh, and for shear strain, it will also generate deformation of the structure, but this deformation is not shown as an elongation or contraction. Uh, it's more of the angle of change. So let's say uh, if you have a cube in 3D space, and now uh, you have shear stress component, you can, well, the, it's given as shear, shear stress component. So this is a Y plane in the X direction, X plane in the Y direction. Uh, and uh, you can kind of consider if you clamped at the bottom surface and you apply a shear force in this direction, it, it generates this kind of stress component, right? So this is a uh, the shear situation and the shear, corresponding shear stress generated on this plane. And for the deformation, it put as um, the original angle here is 90 degree. Now after deformation, this angle be becomes 90 degree minus gamma xy. And the gamma xy here is defined as the shear strain, the deformation and the shear force. So the so shear strain definition. Um, a reduction of the interior angle
formed by two faces oriented towards positive x axis and y axis. Mm -mm. Something's wrong with my pain. Positive X and a Y axis. And of course, this is the definition of gamma X, Y. Shear strain. X, Y, and X, Z, Y, Z uh, is the same, similar. Um, and the unit is given as radius. So I want to say that when you read different uh, textbook in solid mechanics, the definition of the shear strain is slightly different. Um, some of, even like different version of the mechanics material test, we can check it later. Uh, definition of shear strain is like not exactly the same. And sometimes it cause some confusion. Like remember I show you all the screenshot from the definition of safety factor, like some, some are not that correct, some are getting closer, some, yeah. So uh, here, when you read different textbooks, you will also see that definition of shear strain. They are not all of them are correct, but I think this is a, a more reasonable uh, definition, more accurate definition of a shear strain. Uh, so in case you read something that different from my um, definition here, you should understand, uh, yeah. Um, and I don't want to like, uh, again, to, to, to confuse guys, I screenshot all different, uh, definition and tell you which one is correct, which one is wrong. It's kind of like causing more confusion. So um, you just need to understand that definition of the shear strain is, let's say for x, y, gamma x, y. So we know that this is the x plane at the back side, and this is the y plane. And these are two planes that is uh, already towards the positive a, x and y axis. And it's originally, this two plane is 90 degree, right? Originally 90 degree. And after the shear force applied and this angle, originally 90 degree, there's a decrease reduction of angle. And this reduction angle is gamma xy. So I think the definition here is clear enough and accurate. <laughs> so it's a reduction of interior angle formed by the two forces, two, Two faces. I'll run it towards the positive and x, uh, x and y axis. Any question? So uh, this is definition of the shear strain. And uh, there are two common examples, con uh, concepts that you may need to know. Why is a simple shear and why is pure shear? So simple shear it means that uh, when you apply a shear force on this and you assume that it's clamped on this bottom surface and applying shear force on top surface and then uh, it will deform like this. And of course, this deformation is exaggerated as we know that all the deformation in our solid mechanics 
and the ground level, they are small deformation. So now this reduction of angle from the origin 90 degree to uh, after the shear force shear, uh, shear force applied, the reduction angle is shear strain. And sim pure shear means Only this point it fixed, and it, you assume let's let's assume that you have force applied in this direction, and it kind of like for it, and now uh they have a reduction angle here, reduction angle here, and these two, you add these two, it becomes the total reduction angle, uh originally from ninety degree to this one, and the reduction angle again is gamma x y. You add these two angle, um, it becomes gamma x y. And that is a shear strain. So these are the two. Uh, so when some textbooks talk about simple shear, some textbooks talk about it like pure shear, you should know what it means. Um, and of course, deformation, we won't always want to make a connection with uh, the force and the material property, um, like what force generated what kind of deformation. So uh, similar to the elongation and compression, uh, tensile compressive, uh, the equation here is also very similar. Shear stress equal to shear modulus. Remember, in our tensile compressed situation, we have the uh, normal stress equal to Young's modulus times, in 1D situation, equal to Young's modulus times the um, normal strain, right? Now here is the equation is very similar. So this is Hooke's law for sharing stress and strain. And remember when we talk about tensile compressive, we said everything is before the plus deformation, everything is in the elastic range. And the same thing here, uh, all the deformation is within the um, elastic range, it's before the proportional limit. So, so later I will show you that uh, we have the small deformation approximation mathematically. Um, the deformation is within the proportional limit, or there's no plastic deformation. It's so hard to write today, I don't know why. Something wrong with my pencil. And because it's within the proportional limit and because the deformation is so small, uh, mathematically, we can consider this gamma, the shear strain. Equal to tangent gamma. We will use, I will show you example problem how we use this one. So G here is shear modulus. It's similar as Young's modulus when we use for tensile compressive. And of course, everything we derive here is based on the xy plane. And we know that we, we can have similar results from the yz plane. Sorry, uh, the stress component yz and zx. Professor, for this, are we using the same notation that we had before? So like the first one would be like, tau x, y means tau in the plane um, perpendicular to x in the y direction? Yes, 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 you the same.
Thank you. You're welcome. So this y, z, z, x, and x, y, of course, is the same uh, x plane, y direction, y plane, z direction, and z plane, x direction. So that's why I put these two topics together. Um, first, I introduce like stress component, and then I talk about the shear strain. Otherwise, you guys will not understand the subscript. Um, yes, the is gamma equal to tangent gamma. So it's basically because of the deformation is so small. Uh, the gamma here, this angle, if we put it as unit as radian, and then this gamma equal to tangent gamma, which is equal to this length divided by this length. This is a based on assumption when the deformation is so small mathematically, we can assume that tangent gamma, the ratio of these two uh, dimension equal to gamma when, of course, you need to use this unit. If you use a degree, you always need to convert. OK, so let's use this example problem to help understand. Mm -hmm. So we have a plastic block. Uh, this gray thing here is a, uh, I think someone forgot to mute microphone or I don't know. So this this great thing is a plastic block here. Um, it's bounded to a rigid body, rigid support. Rigid support is this one, and a vertical plate. This is the vertical plate, and the force is P is applied on this plate, and of course the plastic block. Um, it will end the shear force and have some deformation. Knowing that the plastic, uh, the material probably shear modulus is. 150, uh, determine deflection of the plate. So deflection of the plate is like, of course, we know that the plate and this force will move downward, but how much it will move downward depend on the shear deformation in this block, right? So how do we calculate? So let's say if we have, uh, we take this thing, we put it on a 2D situation. This is the red color. So for the red area, we know that it's originally before the shear force applied, before the P applied, it's rectangular shape right, the gray block. And now uh, after deformation, after the shear P applied, it will deform. So let's say if this is a deformation, or if I put it here, then it becomes like this. Make sense? So the question asks the deflection of the plate. It basically asks the distance here. So it's originally from here, move to this point. So we need to calculate this distance. How to calculate this distance? Anyone? You need to find the shear strain and then use a uh, trig to find that side of the triangle. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. So so basically, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you have a triangle and based on small deformation approximation, gamma equal to tangent gamma, which is equal to this length divided by this edge length. And then gamma, of course, we can find from the 
force stress on this side and tangi gamma we calculate from the deformation right so we connect everything from force deformation deflection everything so um can say uh, to find the deflection, we can use the equation tangent gamma equal to gamma, and this gamma equal to uh, let's say how to to help you guys see this one. This should be the shear strain gamma, right? And tangent gamma equal to the dimension, let's see, uh, this is two inch, so here is two. And this one is, this dimension is something we need to calculate, I put it as delta. So tangent gamma equal to gamma equal to delta over two, and delta is something we need to calculate. So this is the thing we need to calculate. And of course, um, this, Gamma, we can calculate from stress side. So we know that gamma equal to stress over shear modulus and shear stress. Of course, force when force is given an area where we can figure out. So shear stress equal to shear force over the area. So we can say, hey, it's soft, right? Um, first step. Figure out shear stress. Second step, figure out the shear strain. Third step, we can calculate the deflection of plate delta. So, um, tau equal to V over A force divided by Area, what is the area we use for the calculation? What should be area I use for the calculation? Anyone? Two times 4.8. Huh? Two times 4.8, the area of the plastic block. This area? Yes. Thank you. Any other opinion? Three, three point two times two. What is Actually, that? I'm sorry. It would be four point eight and three point two. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I guess in the chat we have all the three area. So why is this area? And another solution in the chat is three point two times two is this area, and the uh one is how do I draw it? This area. So, I mean, all the mistakes are from the details. If you don't know which area to use, you mess up the whole problem. So uh, when I, whenever we learn a new topic, don't forget the content we learned in the previous topic. If we have a shear force applied in this way, this is area that actually carry the shear force. And this is the area we use to calculate the shear stress. This is the content in the previous class. Don't forget the content. Any confusion here? It should be 3.2 times 4.8. Okay. So this is, um, since I use pound inch, so this is P, uh, PSI. Second step, shear strain equal to shear stress over shear modulus. We just plug in values. This one is very straight, this step is very straightforward. So Shear modulus one fifty.
deflection of the plate. Third step, we need to calculate delta equal to two times the shear strain. Based on the relation here. So this is equal to Any question for this one? Any question for this example problem? So I guess the key point here is that which area you should use to calculate the shear stress and which area you should use to find the relation in deformation, right? This is the area that has the deformation generated by the shear force shear stress. And this is area you use to calculate the shear stress. So don't get confused. Um, let's move on to the next example problem. Uh, professor, yeah. I have a question. What would be the difference if we did in the third step instead of delta equal two gamma, we did delta equal two tangent gamma? Would it be the same thing? Delta equal to tangent gamma. Like delta equals to two tangent gamma instead of yes, two. yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes, it's the same. Delta equal to two tangent gamma, and because a small deformation, tangent gamma equals gamma, so in the end, it's the same. Great, thank you, Richard. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, any other question? Okay, let's check this example. Um, a more complicated, more uh, closer to real life problem. Um, so again, this gray block is is a block that is under shear. So the that is a bearing here. Uh, shear much is given to support a bridge um, during the earthquake, and the beam displacement should not be greater than this one, and the lateral force is this one. Lateral force is applied. It's just like very similar situation. We just rotate the force direction and yeah. Um, knowing the maximum allowable shearing stress is 60 psi, determine the smallest allowable dimension B and smallest required thickness A. How do we calculate these two? What determines A? What determines B? Let's start from B. Which uh, parameter constrain the dimension B? Maximum allowable shearing stress? Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Because the B dimension is this area and this area is the area that carrying the shear force, shear stress. So this area is used for calculating the stress component. And the only constraint is 6 PSI. So if we use this one as an equation, we can solve the allowable dimension B. And this one, how to calculate this one? What is the constraint for calculating this one? Deflection, right? Yes. So the displacement should be not more than this one, it means this is h length and tangent gamma equal to gamma. So uh, very similar. Let's say the first step, tau equal to v over a. Shear force given by kids. And area is eight inch times B. And this one should be smaller or equal to 60 PSI. So B should be greater or equal to 10.4 inch. So this is how we calculate B because B is um, 
in the area in the area that we calculate the stress component. So second one is related to the strain deformation. So now this one shear strain we call to the shear stress of a shear modulus. Shear stress we already calculated. So it's oh shear stress is given. We assume it's under the maximum allowable. And shear modulus 160, both units are PSI. And uh, the deformation, shear strain, the reduction angle. And the same thing we have the gamma reduction angle equal to tangent gamma equal to how to write this equation like deflection and A. Uh, how to write the equation? The observer adjacent, or in this case, the adjacent is A, and the opposite is the deflection. Yes. How how do you write this equation? So this gamma equal to tangent gamma. How to write the tangent gamma equation? Which dimension divide by which dimension? It be three eighths over A. Okay. Uh, Oh, no, uh, sorry. Anyone get confused of this one? Since we have two minutes, let's explain. So this is a red area. Before deformation, it's rectangular shape. And after deformation, there's a reduction angle there. And now this reduction angle is a shear strain, it's gamma. And the deflection of the plate, the displacement of the beam, is should not be greater than three eighths. And dimension here is A. So that's why gamma equal to tangent gamma equal to this one divided by this one. And if I put it here, it becomes this is after deformation, after deformation. So now A should be um, equal to We calculate the dimension A, the smallest uh, required thickness A. Any question here? Um, so if no question, I guess you guys understand. And also it's time. Uh, we have quiz tonight. Uh, please read the announcement in the, 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 the announcement I posted like before quiz one. We still the rule is still the same. Uh, one thing different, some students forget to use the correct uh, UFID. I didn't put a penalty. I told you that is is we, 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 we didn't put penalty for that one. But this time if you still use the wrong UFID, 
um, no, use a wrong digit, um, you will have five points penalty. So that's the difference. Otherwise, the rest of the thing just reads the announcement post before the quit one. Um, Professor, um, yeah. what's the what are we doing in the end about the makeup for the students that have an exam at the same time? Uh, I will email you later. Okay, I just wanted to make sure everything was like taken care of before I missed the exam. The, yeah, the yeah. As long as your um your the the conflict is caused by a class that has higher cost number than mine, I, I I will do the accommodation. I will email you later. Uh, could okay. you please a homework seven solution? I, uh, yes, I will upload very soon. Uh, which chapter from the textbook will be exam one will be? Uh, we will see what we can cover in the next two classes. Um, another question. <laughs> Okay, if no other question, we're done for the class. And if you have anything you want to ask me individually, you can come to my office hour. Anything related to homework, quiz, exam. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming to class and have a great day and have fun for the quiz tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank Actually, you. Sorry, I just have one question before. Yeah. You know, the sheer strain definition. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, from another teacher, I just have it ingrained in my mind as the change between two original orthogonal lines. If that was an answer I put on a test, would that be okay? Or do you want me to use the... Uh, I, I would not ask you to like, write down the definition of a shear strain. You just need to figure out for this kind of definition, uh, for this kind of definition, what is the shear strain? Uh, I guess the the language may be different, but mm -hmm. um, the two language we caught, we have you will have the same result. W what is the actual angle of the shear strain, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just just checking. Just yeah. Wasn't sure. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.